In process two, we build a digital emulsion skin that is thin, flexible, and transparent. The branches image is printed on the carrier sheet, then removed and bonded to a framed mirror. We use flexible cutting mats as a carrier sheet for the digital emulsion substrate and create a template for getting the cutting mat through the printer. Using double stick carpet tape to secure the cutting mat to the template helps ensure that the printer will read the transparent material and also allows for full bleed printing without messing up your printer. In this process I'm going to demonstrate how to make a digital emulsion skin, which really means I'm making something that looks like saran wrap and printing on it. And once I make this saran wrap, I can apply it to various dimensional objects. I have, um, this is a sample of the skin that was made. It's now torn and broken, but you can see how it's transparent and it's flexible. And this would not go through a printer, but it did before it was in this condition. I made it on a uh, plastic bag, actually and I'll show you how to do that. I use the um, InkAid products that are made by the company called InkAid and it is used as an inkjet pre-coat and I use it on various different surfaces. You'll see me using it over and over and over again in various ways and I like it particularly because it goes down very flat and I can put it on a number of different things and then put those objects, be it paper, metal, or in this case an emulsion skin, I can run those through my inkjet printer. And Imagine. in this case I'm going to show how to build it onto a plastic cutting mat that came from the grocery store. These are very inexpensive. They're polyethylene or polypropylene. I'm not sure what they are, but they're wonderful because you can build a layer of um, plastic or acrylic, put ink aid on it, and run it through your printer. This is what they look like in the store. They're very, like I said, very inexpensive. You get two in a package for about a dollar and um, available all over the world. They're made in China and polypropylene or polyethylene, I'm not sure which. The other um, material that I use to build these up on are simply plastic tarp to get most of the wrinkles out. I, don't tell my husband, I run this through the dryer for just a few minutes. I stand there with my dryer um, because I don't want to burn down the house. It is plastic, but it gets most of the wrinkles out. My preference, if I can only work a certain size or small, is to work on these semi-rigid um, flexible cutting mats. They're really easy to use. What I do with these skins after they're built up on these surfaces. I peel them off and then I apply them to different things. In this case I have a three-dimensional object I've applied it to which is the um, antique ceiling tile. This was an old metal tile that was found at a uh, recycling center uh, pulled out of a dumpster and this was painted behind. Uh, it's a photographic image. I uh, printed it from um, I worked on it in Photoshop just slightly and printed it onto a skin. I actually painted on the back of the skin. Um, I painted in the golds and some of this blue because this, this background is so incredibly dense and solid that I needed to brighten the image slightly. So this is one of the reasons, another reason I like these skins. You can really collage well with them. I begin with an acrylic gloss medium. There are all sorts of brands out there. This one works really well. It's uh, Liquitex, all kinds of acrylic. You do want a gloss medium though, a gloss medium versus a matte medium to begin with because the, the uh, gloss, is, gloss medium is a little more uh, substantive. It's got a little more body to it and the goal here is to build up a layer of plastic. Not too much, but to build it up. I simply just get a sponge brush and I'm working in two directions when I do this I go in one direction completely covering my uh, surface of my board in this case my cutting mat if I was to work on a polyethylene bag I would simply tape the bag down to a table surface and 
work on that, the polyethylene sheeting I was showing you earlier. Um, I like the, poly the polyethylene sheeting. It comes in four mil, six mil, eight mil. Uh, the thicker, the better. It's a little bit expensive if you buy huge rolls of it, but relatively as a substrate to work on, coat your tables, whatever, it, it's wonderful. So there you have it. I've worked in two directions very quickly. This is a first coat. The more coats of this you make, the more durable your skin is. It's also more like plastic. If you want to make a sheer, uh, more difficult to handle skin, you can just use uh, straight ink aid, which is what uh, this is. The ink aid gloss type two, you can just start building a super sheer skin. The, ha the, the caution with that is it's so delicate to handle and it is really, really hard to glue it down to something else. Um, so this is what I like about this process. I use the acrylic medium so that I can later glue this down with a heavy bodied acrylic medium, which is gel medium. Gel medium is, is a wonderful adhesive for this and many other processes. Okay, the next step. The, the next step is you have a dry mat. I have a dry mat here that I have coated with two coats of the acrylic medium. Now I'm going to coat it with the ink aid. Super simple, really basic. Just take ink aid. I always work from a new cont uh, container with a brush. I don't like to use my pristine uh, source, I should say. All right, so again, you're going to work in two directions. That's it, real simple. Here I have my pre-coated, it has two coats of the Liquitex on it and two coats of the ink aid. And it is ready to be, it's dry, it's ready to be printed on. So I'm going to set up a carrier sheet that I use so that when I tell something to print, I know where it's going to print. This is something that I do over and over and over again. It's a very simple thing. I take a sheet of paper. In this case, it's not a sheet of paper. It's just a sheet of uh, rigid material, polyester. Any paper will do. Any sort of carrier sheet you determine is useful to you, use it. Tyvek would be perfect for this. I'm taking my pre-coated sheet and I'm going to place it on here after I make some marks. First thing I'm going to do is measure, for me, I like to use two and two because I'm going to tell the printer to begin printing two inches down from the top and two inches in from the left. In Photoshop, I print right from Photoshop and I use the, an Epson printer, so telling it where to print is really helpful. Otherwise, I end up wasting material, and after I've spent all this time making a, uh, an emulsion skin, I want it to print where I want it to print. So all I'm doing is just marking on my template, my sheet, two inches across the top. This seems like a little bit of a nuisance, but I use these sheets over and over and over again, and it's so easy if you're going to do similar things and repeat them to have a have a template. So I have a two inch border, a mark where I can place my now coated um, now coated poly, uh, polyester sheet. The way I hold these two pieces together just to get them through the printer again very very simple. I'm using a double stick carpet tape. It's very inexpensive. You get it at the hardware store. It serves the purpose of just holding this piece to this piece long enough to get it through the printer and that's all you need. Just simply take a piece, cut it off, apply it to the back, and then you remove the, the backing paste, the backing um, material. I'm now just going to place this along my marks. Mm -hmm. It's 
really easy. I'm going to run this through the printer and you're going to see it come out of the printer with ink on it. It's going to be a good thing. I've got a beautiful skin printed on the uh, cutting mat. It's gorgeous. Just have to get it out of the printer, carefully handle it, and it's good to go. I just have to spray it with the Krylon, let it dry, and then I can handle it. I now have my finished emulsion skin. Well, it's not finished, but it's come off the printer. I let it dry a few minutes, and then I post-coated it with crystal clear spray to give it a little more, um, a little more strength. I want to be able to handle this very carefully so I can transfer this printed image or skin onto this uh, recycled, reclaimed piece of mirror. And you can see what this is going to begin to look like by placing it over your image. This is a nice way to work. Um, I'm now building a skin that I can adhere to something three-dimensional. So here I have a very basic three-dimensional object and my image. And you can, again, you can begin to see what it's going to look like. If that Next, I'm going to take the skin off the carrier sheet and show you how to handle it. All right, I have um, the image. I did, did remove the um, backing tape from it. It's just easier to work with it that way so it wouldn't keep sticking to my surface. So I put this down on a flat surface and then I take uh, packing tape. Any tape will do. I like packing tape because again it's clear and I can work through it. I just bring the packing tape across the top edge of my image. You'll notice that I began printing the image on to the carrier sheet part way down. I'm leaving myself a margin where I can work on this carrier sheet and just put this down here and then you begin to peel up begin to peel up your skin and begin to pull it away I like to once I start picking up the skin I pull away this tape because if anything sticky at this point you don't want it to get all caught up you're you're working ultimately with something that begins to feel like saran wrap and like saran wrap plastic wrap it can get all stuck to itself and it can be a real challenge to handle so you don't want to do that so what I've done here is I've put the tape on the surface of the skin I'm working on the surface of the skin but I don't have any ink here in the image I'm not using this part of the skin other than to make a handle I'm going to turn this over right now and on the back side before I start to really peel away anything I want to go along my edges and remove any debris along these edges especially because what happens in the building of these uh, the building of these skins you tend to get a little bit of material on the back side and it almost acts like a sealant and what you want to do is break off any debris off the back I just use a credit card um, my fingernail works really well too but for those of you who don't have fingernails this is one way to, to just get the material away from the back side. You're breaking any edge there. Now turn it back over and you begin to peel up. And this already has started to peel up on its own because of the sticky back of the tape. It's begin to pull up. And that's so nice when it does that. Then you just begin to work off your edges. You're breaking down the seal. Again, my fingernail works well. The other thing that works well is just this is like a hotel key and just bring scrape it down and keep pulling just keep pulling very gingerly very carefully you work it off and you can see I'm beginning to get some separation here of the surfaces and I'm just going to keep going you have to keep working your fingernail down the edges. You'll get a little tearing. It's okay. It all adds interest. These end, this is how these wonderful little edges that you get end up being like a Polaroid emulsion. And if you've ever worked with those, you know that they're really funky around the edges and lovely. So you just keep going and going. One of the finer things that I like to do on this is just to pull the two pieces apart very carefully. And you also want to make sure you're working on a dry surface. 
Everything has to be dry here. Any amount of water in the, on the surface of your table or even your hands being sweaty can cause a problem. All right, so there it is. I have my skin. And this is where you have to be very careful. You don't want it, when you pull it away completely from the board, you don't want it to wrinkle on itself. All righty, I have it. And I can now test this on my surface. And I can see that it's going to look so cool on here. That's going to work great. All right, I'm going to love that. And I'm, I'll be able to go a little bit around the edge of the frame, the white frame. I could paint on behind this. I could paint behind the skin. Skin has some weight to it. If I wanted to paint on it, I would just simply turn it over. And I now am on the back side. I could draw in lines. All of this would only be able to be done with acrylic. And then when it's dry, I will take gel medium and paint gel medium onto the surface of this and then place this onto the gel medium like that. I have decided to complete this piece by putting it down on this um, three-dimensional mirror. I don't generally work with mirrors because they are glass and this is not something that is you know easy to deal with with uh, transporting artwork and whatnot but in this case it's a found object and a skin and it's a neat thing to do so what I use is um, the acrylic gel medium this is a medium bodied acrylic there are all kinds of weights of this this just says gel medium and it's by Dick Blick. I like it because it dries clear and it's it's a nice glue. I mean, I'm using it as a more and more as an adhesive. So I just go in here and paint it in. And I just want to be sure that I get it on all the edges. And because it is glass. I want to be sure, or reflective, I want to make sure that my brush strokes are fairly even. At this point I could texture the whole thing. I'm also not going to put as much on the outside edges. I'll go back and put more down as I get work it down. Just want to make sure that I get it in these corners first. Putting these skins down on these dimensional objects, this is about as much dimension as you could deal with. If you have a lot of um, ups and downs, this it doesn't seem to work as well. It's just you get a lot of pockets. Okay, now the challenge is to know what side is up. And I know what side is up because of my tape. I think I know what side is up. There it is. This is the front side. So I want to put this down. And because this is a landscape, I want to have my brush strokes going horizontally so that I have them a horizon line if there were any strokes that were horizon line like. I mean, it sounds silly to say. Okay, so I don't have a lot of chances to place this and move it, but some, because I haven't put a lot of gel medium around the edge of the frame. It's giving me a little opportunity to pick this up and move it around. Because I built the back up with acrylic medium, with liquid um, medium, this, this does lift up. If you just build your skin from ink aid, you won't have this opportunity. It'll be much more fragile and it'll be harder to work with. So what I want to do now is actually I want to bring this up, I think, a little bit further, almost to the edge. Oh, it's starting to dry on me. So I want to move fairly quickly. There, I have a nice alignment there. Okay, now I just want to work this down into these areas. I'm using a credit card. and Really, I think the bone folder would be a better tool here. This is where a bone folder is going to be nice. And this Teflon folder is particularly nice because things don't stick to it at all. Okay, 
Now, it gets a little funky in the corners, so I might have to ease that. So just take my knife, poke it down. And you're going to get wrinkles because you are going over a three-dimensional object. Those wrinkles are just part of the deal. Okay. Just going to ease it on down. And because I've sprayed this with the Krylon, I can really handle it on the surface. Now if my hands were the least bit wet, this would be a problem. Okay, I can feel I've got some air bubbles in there. I want to get those out just by pulling this back. Just keep working it. There. That's feeling good. You can also put these skins down on um, paper and they're very beautiful over leaf like gold leaf or silver leaf. They can be very beautiful there. Um, you can see I'm putting a fair bit of pressure on here. Now get it to go down on this edge. I'm going to just peel it back, back into my jar. More glue down, more gel medium. Okay, and that. And I have a little bit of wrinkling in the corners. That's okay. It's just it's going to be just part of the part of what happens with making something like this. You can't you can't prevent that. So you have to work with it. When it dries, I will cut away these edges and I may just paint around the edges along here, or I may not. Depends what it looks like when it's completely finished. <laughs>